Hello, British expat in the Philippines. It's uh, Tuesday morning here in the Philippines. It's a particularly hot day today. Um, I've just been into uh, into the town to pay the property tax, the real property tax of the municipality. The total of two properties was 50 pesos, which is about <laughs> um, a dollar American. I'm not quite sure what part of the council tax or property tax that uh, covers, but I think it's based upon the valuation of the, the perceived valuation and taxable rate of a property. So the other property which apparently had already been paid was valued at 96,000 pesos, which I don't think you can buy any property here for 96,000, but how they arrive at that, I don't know. They must have some special formula. But anyway, today it's prompted I was uh, walking back to find a tricycle and I sat myself down where I did where I arrived and started my journey here in the Philippines some seven years ago gave me time to reflect on something that I probably should have maybe addressed. Um, one thing is uh, so many of you foreigners out there uh, meet a girl and make a new life here in the Philippines. Many of us are older generation and uh, our partners are often one or two generations behind us. And um, these things do have uh, a bearing on the, my thoughts because I've noticed over the seven years with all the different uh, exciting uh, discoveries about life here in the Philippines that um, we can, as families, we can all come up with uh, wonderful ways of occupying our time, be it um, growing plants and selling their propagations or making cakes or selling clothes online. All these things are great um, ways of making money. But the one thing that I have noticed over the period of years, not just within my own situation but more more as a general observation around the place and that is that as a general rule I'm not it's very hard to generalize here because not all Filipinos think this way but the ones that I seem to observe it and I believe it's possibly environmental in the sense that nobody really employs anybody full-time nobody has given uh, a contract for employment for more than maybe six months to a year and then they either replace them or they might extend another period of time so the idea of like you and I older generation of staying in a job till you retire basically doesn't apply here in the Philippines and I would imagine the same applies in places like Thailand and China and uh, Vietnam, all these sorts of places. There's a reluctance because nobody knows what tomorrow holds. And this is where the thought pattern comes into my mind. And that is that I've noticed with the younger generation especially, they're very enthusiastic about different ways of making money and getting ahead. And they, they watch these um, overseas movies and they get an idea of what life would be like if they were maybe a little bit richer than they are at the moment and a lot of the kids watch these uh, what do they call them Korean videos and Korean movies and of course the thing is that it's a false impression of life itself uh, many of you will probably remember that if you were left college or left school or left education and went out into the real world to make a living you you probably started off living at home with your parents and as you got more independent 
and uh, you got to make a bigger circle of your own age group of friends you might look at uh, going flatting as they call it going and uh, renting a house together maybe is four or five of you together and paying part of the rent each and then putting in a certain amount of money in the pool for uh, all those other expenses associated with that uh, property. Here in the Philippines that doesn't really happen because as you well know that there is a connection with the family here and to some degree that's it makes more sense to stay at home until such time as you've been whisked away by the love of your life and uh, you go out on a journey to make a new life for yourself outside of your parents uh, compound but in the process you come up with all these wonderful ways of making money if you can't get work you look at ways of maybe starting up some sort of a small business many girls here seem to sell makeup and hair, hair products online whether they are successful or not only they know but you've got to remember that one dollar fifty pesos goes a lot further than anywhere else in the world here in the Philippines a dollar is a dollar um, and a dollar is fifty pesos and that's maybe a meal for lunch and so therefore to get excited over 50 pesos is like getting excited that I can eat today. Well, I think we all know that when we're hungry, it's always nice to eat. So uh, I take my hat off to those that are able to do it. Um, the girls here have often done, we used to sell uh, Halo Halo outside the property. And uh, Moi was the one that went and found himself being the gopher, go for this, go for that. I didn't mind. And uh, we bought all these different uh, products that we would mix up, or should I say they mixed up, to create a Hello Hello, which is a drink, multicolored drink. Uh, I've not actually, I've tasted it, but it's not to my liking, but many people absolutely adore it here. And it's a very cool and refreshing drink. So, when the girls did that, it was a case of jumping in as the parent and trying to get some form of order in terms of so that everybody knows what the likelihood of profit was. You have to arrive at a price to sell the product and therefore you have to know what each individual serving is going to cost you or how many servings you're going to get for 50 pesos or 100 pesos so you have to know what you're putting in in ingredients so that you know what in the end is your cost price uh, yes 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 all right yes yes is a common answer meaning they just want to sell them they want to see the money and as a result um, they're eager to get going so off they go and they start selling and they do quite well I suppose starting around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and working through maybe till 7 at night <clears throat> was a good way of spending four hours making over say five, six days maybe 2,000 pesos worth of profit just from selling Halo Halo on the side of the road. Now of course if you're on a barangay road you're not going to sell as much as if you were on the highway so when we were on the highway that was the best place to uh, pick up your sales because not only people stop but also a lot more people who live along the highway would wander down the road and grab themselves a hello hello but it's always short-lived all these things uh, not always as a result of what we're discussing but often it's because uh, it, the season is very short for selling them uh, because it's something that you sell in the hot weather, the summertime. Not too many people buy Hello Hello in the wet season. Who wants a cold drink in the wet, miserable, windy, cold day? When I say cold, a little bit cooler than 30 degrees. 30 degrees Celsius, that is. 
So, today is a bit of a windy day, so as you're on a mast, I'll see if I can hold it, but it's more stable, but the wind is blowing the camera, so I apologize for that. But there's many things that affect young people today. Oh, I've got to sit there for four hours. Oh my goodness. I have no internet connection or there's no fan. It's too hot. All these things that if you work for a boss, um, you don't always have that option to complain. When you work for yourself, of course, it's much easier because you can just throw the towel in and just walk away. And those that have maybe financed you or got you into, got you up and running, are left to uh, sort out what they want to do with the remaining uh, stock that they've got. Often it's just put away in a cupboard and eventually gets that that perishes, perishes and goes in the rubbish. So. Not always a great option. The same could apply to, for instance, uh, if you're selling online clothing. Again, you have to be in the mood to sit there for a, a couple of hours, maybe three hours online, live, asking someone if they want to buy this t-shirt or that dress or this fancy top. And after a while, there's a lot attached to organizing something like that. You have to take a note of who you just sold it to, uh, keep their contact detail at hand, how much it all adds up to, mark everything with a piece of masking tape so that you know who it's going to and how much it's going to. And then you have the, the situation of either delivering it to a pickup point or maybe arranging to have it sent somewhere. So all these things involve effort. And I suppose what I'm hinting towards is that a lot of the younger generation today want the, they want the end result. But unfortunately, they, in their effort to get there, they lose, they lose the, the reality of life. And that is that you have to work hard to make money. Money doesn't just arrive at your door because there's a customer there. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that you have to do. And there's a tendency here, especially with the younger generation, to start something and never finish it. Because they lose, they lose interest very quickly. And I put that down to the, the fact that we now, life is so electronically organized that as a result, um, everything is instant instant gratification, instant messaging, instant news, instant video, and instant chat. Very often you find that they only chat to their boyfriends, uh, and they'll do that for hours like you might have done on the telephone back home in the old days, if you had a telephone that is. But everything is disposable, everything is uh, instantaneous. Uh, I want something to eat, they go and get it. They don't think about two feet steps or a couple of steps away from where they're preparing the food. All they have to do is put it in the rubbish. Instead it just gets left there for somebody else to pick up. It's something that can irk you as a foreigner because when we, as a generation, and I'm 74 this May, we were always taught to keep our place clean and tidy. It was drummed into us. Here it's called bullying now. It's the latest expression now is you're bullying somebody if you have to ask them more than once. You have to ask them more than once because they don't respond the first time, second time, third and fourth. So I suppose it can be seen as bullying if you're going to use that as your terminology. but. We didn't have that. Our parents used to tell us what to do, and we had to do it. We didn't have the option of answering back. If we did, there were certainly consequences, and many of those were grounded uh, in the belief that, oh, I can't see my friends this week, or 
I can't watch TV tonight. Or I've got to stay up in my bedroom and I must clean it from top to toe before I'm allowed out. And hey Johnny, don't just chuck them in the drawer. Fold them, put them up on the hanger. All that type of thing. So if you're the kind of foreigner who finds it very easy to turn a blind eye, then you're going to love the Philippines because there's going to be thousands of thousands of examples of how things can be done. Oh, never mind, we'll do it tomorrow. You only have to look along many of the roads and streets how laziness can turn into quite a mess. You know, you, you wander down a barangay road and you're quite amazed at the inevitable smoker who, the, who is the uh, most hated person in my mind, especially one who has no consideration of others. They smoke, they throw. Very annoying to see cigarette butts everywhere. Then a bit further along the cigarette container, along with ice cream uh, packets and often bags and Jollibee bags and McDonald's. So they brought them into the area, but too lazy to pick them up and take them home. There's, there aren't rubbish bins that you, along the road where you can put them. In a town or a city, you can often wander down the road, hold on to your rubbish until you see something outside a property, maybe a, a garbage bin with the top off and you can put it in there and do a responsible thing. But it does irk me as a foreigner that this happens. But in time, just like in Singapore, Singapore brought round ordinances and rules and you only have to wander around Singapore to see how clean the place is. No gum anywhere, uh, no spitting allowed, no urinating in public. Of course, all these things are legally uh, in place here as um, offences, but they are not really enforced. So you just have to wait till circumstances have a bigger effect. And you'll find that in time, consequences, which is consequences in the home, or consequences in being in business, or in fact consequences about being around the community, are all about following rules. Uh, some of those rules are just quite simple, and some of them seem a bit stupid, but there's an end result. So, just a thought for the day. I hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you press the like button, you're telling somebody that you liked my video and maybe you might like to watch my next one. Um, sharing it, that's good. Other people get to see my videos and subscribing is even better. So thanks for watching. Bye now.